Hi everybody, hope you are doing well. Hope the quiz was fair to you. Um, we are starting into the quadratic formula and the discriminant today. We'll do completing the square tomorrow and then we will get moving towards our next test eventually. If you got questions on the quiz, please let me know. I'll be glad to work with you with whatever you need. Um, so go ahead, we're gonna get into the quadratic formula. Go ahead and pause the video and try if you can translate the comic by yourself. So take a minute, pause. I'm gonna keep going, so pause it and then you can start it back when you're ready. So walking through this, a bad boy. So we got a negative bad boy, a negative B. Could not decide whether or not to go to a radical party. So he could not decide, plus or minus, radical, so square root. But he turned, but he was being square. So the bad boy is being squared. And got turned down by four awesome chicks, four AC, I love it. And it was all over by 2 a.m. So just a fun way. So this is the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We'll say that's equal to x. We're going to use this when it can't factor. Nice thing about quadratic formula is it always works. Um, if you can factor it, factoring is usually a lot quicker than the quadratic formula, but the quadratic formula always works. It takes a lot longer but it always works. So solve using the quadratic formula. So each equation must be equal to zero before you can use the quadratic formula. So the first one, I got x squared minus six x plus three. So remember our general form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is telling me, if I look at this, my a is one, it's the coefficient in front of it. There's an imaginary one here. b is equal to negative six, c is equal to three. If it helps you to organize your thoughts, go ahead and write that out. So let's write our formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now let's go ahead and substitute in what I know. So negative, negative 6. I'm not simplifying anything yet. 6 squared minus 4a is 1, c is 3, and all of that is over 2 times a, which is 1. So now let's simplify. Negative, negative makes that a positive on the outside plus or minus square root of six squared is 36. Four times one is four times three is 12. All over two times one, which is two. So six plus or minus the square root, 36 minus 12 is 24. All over two. Now let's simplify. So the square root of 24, if I break that down, six times four, three and two, two and two, this is never gonna go away. So that's two root six. So what I have is six plus or minus two root six all over two. When I'm simplifying, I'm just gonna look at the outside numbers. All of those are divisible by two. So x here, my final answer is gonna be three plus or minus the square root of six. And that's gonna be my two answers. What this is telling me is that my answer could be three plus the square root of six, or it could be three minus the square root of six. The plus or minus tells me I got those two options. This should be a six. And you can leave it like that. If I ask you for a decimal, that's what you would type in the calculator. Three plus the square root of six, and then three minus the square root of six, and that would give you your two solutions. But I like exact, so this would be the answer I'm looking for right here. All right, quadratic formula again. So I gotta move this over, so I got three x squared minus five x minus two, it's gotta be equal to zero. So my a is three, b is negative five, and c is negative two. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus four ac all over two a. I highly recommend writing that down every time. So I got negative, negative five plus or minus the square root of negative five squared minus four, times a times c, all over two a. So I got five plus or minus the square root of 25 plus four times three is 12, times two is 24, all over six. So five plus or minus the square root of 49 over six. So I know here, I'll keep it down here. X equals five plus or minus seven over six. Square root of 49 is exact, it's nice and simple. So let's get our actual answers. Oh, I meant to get a different color here. So I'm down there, I got X equals five plus or minus 
7 squared is 6 right there. It simplifies nice. So my two answers here, I'm going to have 5 plus 7 and divide that by 6. I'm also going to have 5 minus 7 and divide that by 6. <clears throat> Sorry for the bell. So 5 plus 7 is 12 over 6, so one answer is 2. 5 minus 7 is negative 2 over 6, so negative 1 third. When you get exact answers like this, you can go back. I could have factored my equation, so I could have factored that if I wanted to, and you can get your same answers that way. This one was factorable, but it goes to show that you can use the quadratic formula to get any answer. All right, last one right here in this section. Get everything to one side, so 4x squared. I'm going to add 2x, so that becomes a positive 4x. I'm going to add 1 because I'm moving it to the other side. So a equals 4, b equals 4, c equals 1. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I got negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. It's a lot of fours. So plus or minus the square root. I got 16 minus 16 over 8. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. So the square root of 0 is just 0. So I just have negative 4 over 8 left over. If you add or subtract 0, it's not going to make a difference. So I only get one answer here, and it's negative one half. So if I look at the top, if I looked at this equation, this is a perfect square trinomial as well. So you could have gotten that answer just by factoring that out. All right, so that is the first couple. So you got little notes here. So simplify the radical, reduce all three outside numbers. If the radicand's a perfect square, follow those operations to get a single number or two. So you're there. All right, discriminant notes. So what is the quadratic formula? Once again, it is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What does that quadratic formula tell you? Your zeros or your roots or your solutions or your x-intercepts, whatever you want to know. So it tells you a whole bunch of things. So now identify the number of solutions by the graph. So I'm looking to see where does it cross the x-axis. So here and here, it crossed the x-axis twice. So this one has two solutions. This only touches the x-axis once. So this is an example of one solution. This one never touches. So you got no real solutions. I'm gonna go ahead and write that in there. So now we're going to look at something called the discriminant. What does the discriminant tell you? It tells you how many solutions. That's those solutions. And what kind are they? So what is the formula for the discriminant? So the discriminant is the number underneath your square root. So in your quadratic formula up here, the part underneath your square root is b squared minus 4ac. That is called your discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac. That is your discriminant number. So if we're looking at this chart right here, what the discriminant tells you. If I'm looking at a number, you got three different options. I can have a positive number, I can have a negative number, or I could have zero. Those are my three options. So if I have a positive number, a positive discriminant, I got two real solutions. And what my graph is going to look like, it's going to cross twice, just like we had above. So an example, I don't know, you got x equals negative 3 and negative 1, give or take. Uh, we'll do examples later. That's what the discriminant would look like. But um, The second one, if my answer is 0, I only have one real solution. Because if I look at my graph... It's going to come, it's going to touch, it's only going to touch one. So, I don't know, x equals negative two. If it's negative, you're going to have two imaginary solutions. So what the graph's going to look like is that last one. 
you're not gonna get an x equals number. If you do, it's gonna be plus or minus an i. There's gonna be an i included, so you got two imaginary numbers. Because it's a negative under a square root, anytime you have a negative under a square root, you're gonna use your i's to simplify. So that's kind of the chart we're looking at. So let's look at this. So find the discriminant and give the number and types of roots of the equation. We are not solving it here. I'm finding the discriminant, and all I want to know is the number and types of roots. So everything is on one side. I went ahead and did that all nicely for you. So here my a is 1, my b is 6, my c is 11. So b squared minus 4ac is my discriminant. So I got 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 11. So 36 minus 44. I already know it's negative. Because 36 minus 44 is negative 8. So I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. That's how you would use the discriminant. It's a quick way leading us into other things to find out how many solutions you're going to have. So here, my a is 1, my b is negative 2, my c is negative 1. Remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So b squared minus 4ac. So negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. So I got 4 plus 4 is 8. So I'm going to have two real solutions. So C right here, I got A is 1, B is negative 12, C is 36. So B squared minus 4AC, get negative 12 squared minus 4 times A times C. So negative 12 squared is 144, minus 4 times 1 times 36 is 144. So I get 0. That tells me I'm only going to get one real solution. So that's my discriminant. That's how many and what kind. Lastly, over here, A is 1, B is 7, and C is 14. So B squared minus 4AC, 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 14. So 49 minus 4 times 14 is 56. So you get negative 7. So I got 2 imaginary again. So there's my discriminant, and there's what kind and how many. So the discriminant is nice and quick, just the part under the square root. From there, once you got your answer, you can, you've already got it. All you got to do is find the rest of the, um, the quadratic formula, and you are good to go if you needed to find the actual solutions. All right, lastly, go ahead and recite this a bunch of times. You don't have to fill this out. Um, but you need to make sure you memorize it the more you write it. I write it every single time I do a problem, so I substitute in and I don't make mistakes. I promise you that will help. So there is your quadratic formula um, and our discriminant. So if you got any questions, please let me know. If not, work on your assignment and I will talk to you later.